this service of worship here in St. Matthew's Chapel. My name is Jim Beal. It's my privilege to be the priest in charge here at this time, and I'm very grateful for the assistance in the production of this service of Leonard Sergius and Kathy Rosin. The order of service which we'll be using, the scripture readings which we'll be using for today, include those appointed for the fourth Sunday in Lent, along with the collects. We'll also have some prayers offered and a reflection on the scripture readings. If you'd like to join in saying the Creed, the Nicene Creed, or the Lord's Prayer at the appropriate time, you're certainly cordially invited to do that. Our director of music, Kirk Asset, has included the hymns which he has chosen for this Sunday, the ones we would have been singing if we'd been here, but we thought it might be appropriate if you knew which ones they were. Many of them are available online if you'd like to uh, refer to them by their first line. The hymns are number 520, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is, number 371, Surely It Is God Who Saves Me, number 393, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise, number 352, Amazing Grace, and number 505, Be Thou My Vision. The first hymn that I mentioned, number 520, we'll be using as the psalm reading. It's a Christian paraphrase of the 23rd Psalm, which is the psalm appointed for today. Let us pray. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came from heaven to be the true bread which gives light in the world, and came to us to be the light of the world. May we ever walk in his light and show forth your glory in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and you forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins, and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Ephesians, in the fifth chapter, starting at the eighth verse. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 23, and I'm going to read from him 520, the king of love my shepherd is. The king of love my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never, 
I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. Where streams of living water flow, my ransomed soul he leadeth, and where the verdant pastures grow with food celestial feedeth. Perverse and foolish oft I strayed, but yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulder gently laid and home rejoicing brought me. In death's dark veil, I fear no ill with thee, dear Lord, beside me. Thy rod and staff, my comfort still, thy cross before to guide me. Thou spreadst a table in my sight, thy unction grace bestoweth. And oh, what transport of delight from my pure chalice floweth. And so through all the length of days, thy goodness faileth never. Good shepherd, may I sing thy praise within thy house forever. Also with, with, you. with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is written in the ninth chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the first verse. Glory, Glory to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When Jesus had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then the man went and washed, and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is not this the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to the man, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask Jesus how he had received his sight. He said to them, They put the mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they again said to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man said, He is the prophet. Jesus went searching for the man, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You have seen him, and the one speaking to you is he. The man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ.
Jesus said to his disciples, I am the light of the world. This morning's gospel describes the healing of a man born blind. And the epistle reading is part of a letter that St. Paul wrote to the newly baptized Christian community in Ephesus. But in both passages, Jesus is revealed as light. In the gospel, the blind man receives his sight. Jesus becomes the light to that man. And Paul encourages the Christian community to live as children of light. Once, he says, you were darkness, now you are light in the Lord. Now that image of darkness and light and the conflict between them uh, is used throughout John's Gospel to show the struggle between the forces of evil and good. It kind of comes up over and over again. If you think of the prologue to John's Gospel, the great passage that we hear at the uh, Christmas Eve services, we hear these words read. In him was light, and that light was the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness shall not overcome it. As we hear this, we come to the realization that within us, the light of the Spirit is more important, more real, more valuable than the light of the body. And again, this is a, sort of goes through the entire Gospel. We've been hearing, uh, or we would be hearing passages from John's Gospel in which there's a series of encounters between Jesus and individuals or communities, and in each of them, something physical is transformed into a spiritual metaphor. First, he meets the woman at the well. The woman has come to draw water. Water is very important on a purely physical level. She needs the water, it's valuable to her. But as he talks to her, he says, I am the living water, and that water will never dry up. That water will never run out. And it becomes a metaphor for the life which he gives us. And a little bit later, when the people have come to hear him, and they don't have anything to eat, he provides them with physical bread. He says, you're hungry, you need something to eat. But again, that image is transformed into something else when he says, I am the bread of life and those who come to me will never be hungry. And the people begin to understand the nature of the sustenance which he's giving them. Well, as this morning's Gospel unfolds, the disciples are very concerned on a purely physical level, or biological level, if you like, what caused the man's blindness? And they think it must have been something that somebody did that was wrong. They say, well, was it his fault, even though he was blind from birth? Did God know something about him that caused him to go blind? Maybe it was his parents, blame the parents. Who doesn't? Must have been something his parents did. God said, well, I'll show you. I'll make your child look blind. That kind of tendency to think that if we suffer, somehow we must have done something wrong. And you sometimes hear that in remarks people make about a person who may have had a bad experience. And they say, well, he had it coming to him. Or the reverse side, if a woman, say, or a man is suffering from a very horrible illness, they say, what did he do or she do to deserve that? As if there's some kind of connection. And on a much larger level, sometimes natural disasters are interpreted as a punishment by an angry God upon a sinful people. Whether it's a hurricane or an earthquake or even an epidemic, such as the one we're enduring today. If you go back to the Middle Ages and see the horrible plagues which afflicted them, many people thought that they must have been a punishment by an angry God. And to that kind of thinking today, Jesus gives an emphatic no. That's not the reason. And we need to hear that no. Any kind of affliction is not a punishment by an angry God who, in a sense, we see on the other side of the struggle that we're going through right now. In the contrary, in the midst of this crisis, God is with us. God is with those who are ill. God is with those who are suffering. 
God is in the midst of the medical workers, of the nurses and doctors, and first responders, and those who bring supplies to them. God is in the midst of us. God is our hope and strength. And we will be carried through this by God's healing power and by God's grace. A bit later in this morning's Gospel, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And to follow me is to live in the Spirit, to do what is good and right and true and life-giving. That's the choice we have. And very often in the Gospels we hear this choice offered to the people, and we hear often, John said the people were divided. Some people said yes, some people said no. But that's the moment we come to, to choose to do the right and the good and the true or not to. And when a person receives, that man receives the sight, he could choose, he could choose. He has a choice. He's got his sight, like the lepers who were cleansed. <laughs> He's got his sight. He could walk away, he could rejoice, he could celebrate, forget all about Jesus. Or he could accept Jesus as Lord. And at the very end of the Gospel, that's the presentation Jesus makes to him. And he says, yes, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. So the, the man born blind is not only cured of his physical blindness, he receives insight of the Spirit, the insight that we are all called to accept. I think times of crisis, uh, such as we're in right now, we're in a kind of extended crisis right now, I find that times of crisis tend to bring out the best in human nature, but also sometimes the worst. Uh, you, you can see both of those. And um, a very small example, but a very vivid one, I'll never forget this, and many of you may have seen it as well on, on TV, was two people physically fighting over a package of toilet paper in a grocery store, actually coming to blows over who should get it. That is something of the power of the darkness of human nature, which sometimes overwhelms us. But I think that for every example that we have, we have many more of generosity, of kindness, of compassion. Um, I saw a woman in, when I was in the store a few days ago, and she was just sort of standing there bewildered. I think she was a bit overwhelmed. She didn't know what to do. And one of the store employees just came over and he said, can I help you? And she didn't even say anything. She was so paralyzed. And he said, look, let's go down the aisles and we'll just see what you think you need. You just point and we'll get them to you. A little unnoticed by the larger community act of kindness and of love. And I know that in our own community, I have heard and experienced many, many acts of generosity, kindness, and love which will bring this community together and continue to bring it together. So at the end of all this, wherever we are, there will be an end. We can come back uh, through our suffering, through our fear, through our anxiety, knowing that we were supported by the love of God and the love of Christ in the lives of those around us. As is my wont, I have a, a bit of an anecdote I'd like to tell you about one of the hymns that Kirk suggested for today, and it's a very appropriate hymn. I think the author of the hymn probably had today's gospel in mind when he wrote it. It's the hymn Amazing Grace. It was written by a man named John Newton, who had been uh, the captain of a slave ship, that is a ship that brought uh, slaves from Africa or the Caribbean up to England in order to surf there. And because of an experience which he had of God's grace on that voyage, on a voyage in which he very nearly died, he dedicated his life to God. He made a choice, and he chose to follow God. And that's where the first verse comes from. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. But John Newton converted that experience of God's light in a very practical way. He became an abolitionist, one of the strongest advocates of the abolition of slavery in British Isles, one of the instruments of abolition. He also became 
uh, priest of the Church of England, which is, is good to hear. But I think the important point here is how it transformed him, how that experience transformed him and his life into a life of service to God, of following the life which we have in Christ. Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, describe all honor, might, dominion, majesty, and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We declare now the articles of our faith in the form of the Nicene Creed. Let us confess our faith as we say, We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all the things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, also with you. Let us pray. We offer this morning the prayers of the people. Peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For our bishops and for all clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the leaders of the nations, for all in authority, and in particular at this time, we pray for leaders of governments around the world who unite and whom we pray will continue to unite in their quest to defeat the enemy of the virus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For good weather, for abundant harvests for all to share, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. In a few moments of silent prayer, I ask you to bring before God at this time all those people whom you may hold in your heart, who are in danger, those who are lonely, those who are anxious, those who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Also, in a few moments of silent confession, let us bring before God our own shortcomings, our own failings to live up to the call which is ours in Christ. Almighty God, have mercy. 
mercy of finding a pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For all who have died, let us praise the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time to make our common supplications to you. And you promise that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of your servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We pray particularly at this time for all those who are in affliction. Almighty and everlasting God, the comfort of the sad and the strength of those who suffer, hear the prayers of your people who are in any trouble. Grant to anyone in distress mercy, relief, and refreshment through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember, Lord, your people bow before you and those who are not physically present with us. Care for the infants, guide the young, support the aged, inspire the faint-hearted, and bring the wandering to your fold. Journey with the travelers, encourage the oppressed, deliver the captives, heal the sick, strengthen all who are in tribulation, necessity, or distress. Remember for good those who love us, and those who hate us, and those who have asked us to pray for them. Remember especially, O Lord, those whom we have forgotten, for you are the helper of the helpless, the saviour of the lost, the refuge of the wanderer, the healer of the sick. You know the needs of all, and have heard each prayer. Save as in your merciful, loving, kindness and eternal love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass against, against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.